importance of discipline because it has to do with civilizing your child and some of you do not want to go there. Ali Malay this morning joining me as a counselor. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are you? Good. A few weeks ago, we saw a video of a woman who was beating up this child mm. like, you know, there were a piece of something. Mm. Whip them upside down. What makes parents do that? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Um, I would like to thank you for hosting me. Thank you for, for this coming. Uh, everyday life. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this, this is a very important topic to talk about. Um, what makes parents really do this kind of thing? Uh, they, we have a trend in society today that uh, disciplining is equated with beating, mm -hmm. punishing, uh, pushing on the wall, hitting, pulling hair, uh, causing emotional insult. So we have that notion that uh, parents equate the disciplining with this kind of punishment. Yet, in the real sense, uh, punishment means to teach. Mm -hmm. You teach discipline, you teach good morals and uh, good behavior, acceptable behavior in society. So what makes them do that? Uh, you know, Brian, that uh, most, most people have grown up in uh, abusive homes. They have grown up in a very tortured environment. Mm -hmm. So where have we resolved all this as parents? So which means some parents have not yet resolved their own abuse that happened right. some times back. So they keep pushing on to, to, to the next the generation, children, right. to the children. So we have that. We then we have uh, so many other psychosocial issues that get collected within uh, one person and uh, they really outburst, they explode in the hands of uh, s disciplining the children or punishing them. Mm -hmm. So, and the other issue is that uh, parents use anger. Mm -hmm. They use anger in terms of anger, that's when they think of disciplining. Yet disciplining is something very healthy, uh, which should be done in a very prudent way, mm -hmm. and they should not impact. The prudent ways that have been suggested, you know, mm. of mm. course, growing up, who are mm. beaten. Yes. Okay? And uh, you knew it. Yes. They would even punish you for the future. Exactly. Uh, the parent can say, that one is for tomorrow, because I am sure you're going to do something, mm. you know, bad. Mm. But that has been, uh, now th the subject now is, this kind of punishment gives these children the right to do anything, because, you know, there's no... Serious punishment, take me in Bobatsma to the naughty corner, uh, deny them TV. I can, you know... Give them negative labels. What, what's that? Uh, can't, doesn't it perpetuate bad behavior, the kind of punishments that we want, uh, that children embrace now, that all these NGOs mm. uh, are advocating for? Absolutely. It causes uh, serious impact and damage, especially if it is negative. The emotional labels, the negative labels, the beating, cannot leave the child the same way. Mm. Because uh, we have had uh, incidents of emotional, psychological, uh, physical, and uh, a lot of uh, basically emotional bruise. That's mm. the most uh, damaging thing that it can cause the child. Mm. Uh, when I say emotional bruise, I mean uh, the child gets used to the routine of beating instead of getting to the routine of having a positive talk with a parent, get a kind of what we call reinforcement, a positive reinforcement through rewards, especially when they do positive things. And in this notion, this kind of trend will now have to impact, of course, negatively. Mm -hmm. But if we have it the other way around, for example, we have uh, you observing every day life, every day you need to be observing your child and get those clues or behavior clues that could be communicating an abuse, that could be communicating that there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the problem we have today is we wait for this, these behavioral difficulties to, to outgrow and then we think of what? Punishing. Mm -hmm. Yet this should be a day observation. Right. 
with your child, other than coming out and you spank this child, you, you beat or at a time when it has outgrown, it, it may not be working out very well. What do you advise parents to do? Of course, of course, you know, the beating and all over the face and mm. it, it may be unacceptable, but what can the parent right now do for their child? This is a, a punishment that is appropriate mm. for the children. Okay, we wouldn't say that uh, giving sometimes uh, a stroke of the cane, uh, we, w we don't want to rule it out, but apply it it, it, it. it works as a last resort? At a, as a last resort, and it should be fair, it should be consistent, and it should be clear to the child as to why you are doing it. And you don't do it in, in, a, in, a, in, a, mean, in a very damaging way. Mm -hmm. Communicate what the child has done. Give time to this child to think about what probably could he could have done. And the other issue is to engage the children in decision making. Uh, if you're making ground rules for the home or for the school or whatever, it's important to have a representation of this child because they're the ones who are going to use these rules mm -hmm. for the good conduct. So kind of engage them. Then the other thing is if you cannot manage, if you know that you don't have basic skills to, to do the parenting, it's important to consult the expert. Right. Um, uh, it's good news that UNTV are doing it in a better way. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have information on how to upbring a child, you understand your child, you respond to the needs of the child in an appropriate manner uh, that may not be coercive, that may not be damaging. Mm -hmm. But instead, you, you respond to the needs because uh, children have needs just like you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they, they have needs, they are like they want to be respected, they want, uh, they, they want direction into the future, they want to be independent and all those. So the moment you do not understand these needs, for them, uh, once you abuse or you attempt to abuse any of those needs, they will respond they, by acting up in certain behaviors. For example, soiling, uh, running away from school, uh, even being, a rev they will revenge and actually they will rebel against our rules. Mm -hmm. And that is when you get pissed off and you want to smash this child mm -hmm. and finish. Mm -hmm. So instead of using anger, have peace, be calm, give time to the child to think about it, and most important, understand this child is psychological development. Because Brian, there are some actually uh, parents are punishing children for some normal developmental trends. For example, oh, uh -huh. The child may, you know, children are sensitive to whatever happens around them. Mm -hmm. So the child does not talk, but they will show you. They may not talk, but they show you that I have a problem with you. For example, uh, being rebellious and so on. So what is important here is that you have to be sensitive also and understand this child. Let the child understand that this environment is flexible, we mm -hmm. can talk. Yeah. However, when things get worse, then you need also to be consistent. Apply these two co 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 consistent, concurrently. Co right. right. uh, that is positive reinforcement, that is giving a token, a reward for the good conduct, for the good behaviors, for the good implementation of the rules. Give them reward, thank them. That is good. But at the same time, when they, they, they go a little bit astray, mm -hmm. you don't pull out the force, but give them time to think about it, and eventually talk. You can have a talk. Right. Yes. Finally, uh, can you recommend some, you know, like maybe two or three age-appropriate punishments mm -hmm. for, for the children? Uh, things I can do for my, uh, you know, 
some people say they are called the terrible tools. Mm. Terrible tools. Things I can do for my 15 year old to 18 year old. Mm. What can I do for such children that won't involve, you know, beating mm. or harming them? Mm. Uh, the, first, the most important thing is to have a healthy bond with this child for, from birth up to around 18 months. It's very important to have a healthy bond which, you, which will involve love, touch, uh, soft touch. Like for example, the, this bond can be created ha through involving yourself in bathing the child, being so close to the child, so that you understand the clues, the cues, which could be communicating a problem, and then you respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. So bonding is very important. We, we, they, there must be a close link with the children mm -hmm. as much as possible. Because without this bond, uh, someone else will come and close the gaps in a very bad way. Uh, say for example, if the girl has grown up and there's nobody close, mm -hmm. of course she will act up by looking for somebody who can do it, who tells her that you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. The second thing is it's also important to, to have some kind of training. You see, in this country we have a, a challenge that I don't, I don't know where they train parents from. I don't know whether you've heard of where they train parents from. <laughs> because in, in, in some other countries, th this is a very serious policy yeah. that parents are given some prior mm. education before they go for what? the real parenting. Mm. Otherwise, you may end up causing abuse which may be dis disastrous to the country. Right. Because if a, pa a child does not grow up very well, it means it's not going to be a good citizen, will not be taxed, will be rebellious, will be a crime person. It's, it's amazing that, that the, the effects of not doing your job as a parent uh, mm. ultimately you know, affect the country at large. Mm. Ali Male is a counselor and uh, we'll be sharing those contacts uh, of him on our Facebook page. Ali, thank you so much for coming no, through. Uh, like it or not, your children are watching you. And you, as much as you dole out, uh, you know, advice to them and, and teach other people how to do it, your behavior and conduct leaves a lasting impression on your children. So make sure you watch out parents. I know it's hard, you know. I, I have a, a boy who is now in his terrible tools and I, mm. I keep asking myself, was I doing this when I was two? Probably, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you have to read a lot. You have to ask people how they do it. Consult. You know, consult yes. and make sure that your child grows up in a loving and uh, comfortable environment. Yes. Mm. When we come back, Aisha will be giving us the latest in the world of sports.